Once upon a time, in the land of Uz, I said Uz, not Oz. But it could have been Oz, even though there are no wizards, no witches, no munchkins running around. Just an ordinary man named Job, who suffers greatly at the hands of God, who keeps faith with God, and then is restored to health and well-being by the same God. Welcome to the second talk in the book of Job. Today I want to look in particular at the original folk story of Job. We're not sure when it was first written down or indeed when it became part of an oral tradition, but quite clearly it goes back to around the time of the Jewish monarchy, so between the 6th and 8th centuries BCE. And it's a very simple story. It's simply the tale of one day God, who is a bit like a monarch really, with a, with a court. Some people say it's borrowed from the idea of the heavenly court of the gods in, in Babylon, who ultimately sits around talking to his advisors and says, Look at this man, Job. He is a good and holy man. He says his prayers. He does everything right. He follows the rules. There's none like him. And then one voice raised in dissent says, well, that's because you are so nice to him. It is, of course, the Satan. Now, the Satan isn't the devil. That's, that's not what the Satan is. The Satan is the accuser. He is, in a sense, God's chief of intelligence, chief of security. He's also a kind of devil's advocate to God when God is making decisions. Almost a trickster figure. And the Satan says the only reason why Job is good is because you give him everything. He's got a wife, he's got children, he's got cattle, he's got sheep, he's got goats, he's got the whole tutti. Take all that away and he will hate you. And God says, oh, no, 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 of course not. And the Satan says, well, let's have a bet. And so they do. And so suddenly, all in one day, God... So suddenly, all in one day, Job loses everything. He loses all his cattle, his sheep, his goats. Those that aren't stolen by bandits get fried by lightning. All his servants are killed off, either by lightning or by bandits. And his children all die in a freak accident. It's just him on his own. And still at the end of the day, he says, well, God gives, God takes away. Blessed be God. And God in his heaven looks down and says to the Satan, you see, I was right. And the Satan said, well, I don't know. We must, we must take it one step further. Make him suffer. This is just material stuff. Let him suffer and he'll curse you. God says, okay, but don't kill him. So the next moment, poor old Job, after all that he had on a bad day, ends up discovering he's got terrible skin disease. And now his wife says to him, curse God and die. Now in some of the translations, it says, bless God and die. And the Hebrew actually is bless. But that is more of a taboo about using the word curse with God. Even among people who were writing a folk story, you don't want to say curse God. Anyway, so she tells him to curse God and die, and he berates her and says, how can you say that? God gives, God takes away, this is how it is. He falls into silence, his friends come to comfort him. And then 38 chapters later, at the end of the book, God restores everything to Job. He gets everything back multiple fold. And he lives a long and happy life. And they all lived happily ever after. Notice I said it's very much a folk story. But notice too, I jump from chapter 2 to chapter 42. What happens in between? Well, that's when the story gets expanded. And we'll talk about that in the weeks to come. How Job responds to his initial suffering. What do we make of this folk story? Well, as it stands, it seems to us like the kind of conventional wisdom many of us already have accepted. We are faithful to God, and God 
treats us okay. How many of us, when things go wrong, wonder what we have done wrong? That's precisely the question that this folk story raises. Because we know, as readers, and Job never knows, that the whole thing is a bet. It's a game played by God and the Satan. And poor old Job is, the, he is, how should we describe it? He is the, the tool that they use to play their game. He is the fall guy, if you want to use another term. Job, at this point, is a lot like many of us who have grown up with this idea that if you do right, if you behave yourself, if you say your prayers, God will be good to you. Well, we all know that doesn't happen all the time. And indeed, perhaps, we may be deluding ourselves that it ever happens. What the rest of the book of Job does is explore this question of God, suffering, and innocence. I look forward to talking to you again next week as we explore further how Job responds to suffering and indeed how we might learn from Job.